time served to our community. He was elected to the Overland Park City Council in 1995 as a representative of Board 3. He served on the council for 10 years before being elected mayor in April 2005 and re-elected in 2009. Mayor Gerlach currently serves on the board of the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Council, the Overland Park Convention and Visitors Bureau, Johnson County Community College Foundation, and the Friends of Johnson County Development Supports. He's also a member of the K-State School of Leadership Studies Advancement Council, the ISA Commission, and is Vice President of the League of Kansas Municipalities Governing Body. And when he's not busy spending many hours to fulfill his mayoral duties, he's also the Director of Marketing for a printing company in the promotional products industry. He's married to his wife, Jill, and has three children, Chris, Jennifer, and Katie. He is one busy guy. And I suppose after last night's basketball results, uh, happy guy. Please help welcome Mayor Barber.
Today, we're going to answer just two questions. What is Oldman Park today? And the second one is, what is Oldman Park's future? Name is Curtis Arnold, Arnold's Lawn and Garden. Santa Fe and Foster, 80th Street. We put that name on there for a reason. It was our name, but also it set us up in the advertising page. A is before B. <laughs> we actually sell and service lawnmowers. Started in 1968. Uh, Mr. Jennings, the gentleman we got the business from, uh, he actually had had a grandfather that started out in this area too, so a lot of, a lot of family old time business in the downtown area. Downtown Overland Park has been more of a family organization than anything else, I think. It's been a safe area. Let's hope it stays that way. We had about a 10% increase every year, so that was a good reason to stay. And, and business is really a bottom line all about dollars. You can order that one, because I know that's the same one. I won't ever move. I told them that they could figure the business is gone when they threw dirt in my face. Just nice people to do business with. Curtis, you're correct. Downtown Overland Park, the original business at the center for Overland Park, helped many families prosper, and that continues today. Overland Park began with the arrival of a risk taker, William Strang Jr., who wanted a park-like community, complete with homes, businesses, and schools. He built a railroad between Oakland Park and Kansas City. The Strang Line eventually closed, though, because of an innovative new mode of travel, the automobile. But progress brought with it the beginning of a new era a new opportunity. In 1960, Oval Park became the first, the new first class city with a population of 28,000 people. Just 10 years later, in 1970, Oval Park's population grew and doubled to more than 78,000 residents, becoming the largest city in Johnson County. This growth continued in all areas of the city, including the residential area, retail, and office. What, what must have been one of the most pivotal business moments in Oval Park's short history was a groundbreaking that took place in 1973. Following many years of planning, a centralized business office development was created in a park-like setting. You all know that. That development was Corporate Woods. It soon became a destination for companies worldwide. Corporate Woods created demand for more commerce and services, including retail, hotels like the Marriott and the Doubletree. Later, other business development came, including South Creek Office Park and the Sprint Campus, creating an influx of employees and further demand for retail and housing. The city added to that demand just two years ago when we opened the world-renowned 12 field state-of-the-arts Oval Park Soccer Complex. Last summer, the complex hosted the National U.S. Youth Soccer Championships and they were even broadcast nationwide. Just one other exciting side note. We just found out a couple weeks ago that Oval Park is one of three finalists for the 2012 U.S. Youth National Soccer Championships. And when we hosted this event last year, it resulted in thousands of hotel room nights and an estimated $1.5 million in new revenue for the Oval Park economy. Just like Corporate Woods, the soccer complex is creating a demand for hotel rooms, restaurants, and retail shops. For families visiting the soccer complex, we understand that the American Girl at Oak Park Mall is a popular destination. 
On another side note, we just heard through the social media world that the Oak Park Mall American Girl is already among the top three locations nationwide for this company in just a short span of a few months of being open. And its impact on other customer traffic at Oak Park Mall has been tremendous. Congratulations, American Girl. It's that <coughs> Isn't that great? Two new menus, the Old Park Soccer Complex and American Girl, both generating new business. That is what Old Park should be about, generating business and economic growth. Well, about 10 years ago, we did just that when the city opened this facility along with the Sheridan Hotel next door. This complex has attracted business that would have gone elsewhere. From those early days, Strang thought about Oakland Park as a community that people wanted to call home. Our residents enjoy numerous amenities. Some of those include parks and pools, the community centers, the farmer's market, hot air balloon festivals, the jazz fest, or the July festivities, the arboretum and botanical gardens, and outstanding neighborhoods, and then so much more also. As this city continues to grow, our city leaders, past and current, share a common vision. To build a community with a quality of life second to none by maintaining progress and economic success. Our brand, our identity, above and beyond by design, really is about what our community has been achieving ever since its founding. Important to us is responsible and progressive government that delivers quality services, a well-designed and efficient transportation network, effective public safety, first-class education systems, and a unique relationship between business and government that provides opportunities, enhances commerce, and brings jobs. It's this foundation that makes Oval Park a great place to live, do business, and spend your, your easy time here. I'm Kristen Stoman. I work for DLR Group. We're an architectural engineering firm, and I do business development and marketing for them. I feel very fortunate to both live in Overland Park but then also work. DLA Group's been fortunate enough to do a lot of the projects in and around Overland Park including the Deer Creek development here where our office is. We're doing the new Blue Valley's Middle School and we also did the Overland Park Convention Center and Hotel. We did the soccer complex which was a lot of fun. My husband and I made a very distinct choice to move to Overland Park. Once we went into our neighborhood, just the sense of the community, the, the kids playing down the street and being close to the schools was something that's just kept us there. You know, Overland Park's just a great city. It's, it was well planned out. The business community, both on the private and public side, is wonderful to work with. People in Overland Park, we take our quality of life, both where we work and where we live, for granted. And sometimes I think Overland Park's a little bit humble and not um, patting ourselves on the back as often as we should for what a great community we've built. Overland Park is community. We're fun. We're comfortable. Family and future. I hope my husband and I can stay here for quite a long time and if the girls decide to move away after college that this will be a place that we can come back to. Kristen, you're right. Oval Park is a little bit too humble at times and we need to pat ourselves on the back. Let me do that right now. Last year in 2010, Oval Park received plenty of national attention including among the top 50 safest cities in the United States by CQ Press, one of the best cities for mom by online design publication, The Daily Beast, among the top 100 places to live 
by RelocateAmerica.com. Top 10 Best Places to Reinvent Your Life in Retirement by U.S. News and World Report. Yep. Oh, thank you, Steve. I would not forget that one either. Seventh Best City for Best Places to Live by CNN Money Magazine. That's right. Oval Park was seventh in the nation. And Oval Park also was rated by CNN Money Magazine in its Where Homes Are Affordable article. You know, our first 50 years were historic. Many cities don't have these kind of achievements over that short span of time. But our continued success and business growth will be crucial in the next 50 years. So, what do we want for Oval Park's future? First of all, the last three years have changed us. We have reduced our capital improvements budget by over half since 2009. We took it from $225 million down to $103 million in 2012. The CIP, well, it funds streets, bridges, parks, streetlights, traffic signals, and so much more. We have had to defer maintenance on streets also. At one time, we provided an additional $1.7 million to enhance maintenance of streets. That is eliminated. The impact? Rather than upgrading 16 miles of thoroughfares, we will be only upgrading six miles of thoroughfares. Also, in the last few years, we have cut more than 70 full-time positions. In fact, our current full-time staff level of 823 is 17 fewer than in 2002. But that includes an increase in 50 positions in the police and the fire departments. We've also reduced our budget by $33 million since 2009. Today is the same as it was six years ago. We've increased health care contributions by employees. We modified retirement programs, and we've frozen employee salaries. Now, this isn't anything that business, we just like business, have had to respond to difficult economic times. Others may be saying that they're just making government more affordable. Well, Oval Park has always been the best deal for your money. Our property tax rate today is lower than it was in 2004. Matter of fact, our property tax rate is and has been the lowest of any city in Johnson County and any first-class city in the entire state of Kansas. In fact, we are all, excuse me, we are all lower. We have lowered this by half. We are lower than half of what other cities are that are comparable in Johnson County. As I look at our city, I know a few things are very important to me. They are creation of businesses and jobs, and sustaining and strengthening the appeal of our local economy. Excellent infrastructure, such as streets, parks, pools, the farmstead, the arboretum, and so much more. Outstanding, safe neighborhoods, cultural and entertainment attractions, balancing new growth and redevelopment, quality delivery of government services such as snow plowing. And as an example of snow plowing, for instance, we've had about 26 inches of snow so far this year fall on Oval Park. 12 inches just in the last blizzard on February 1st. If you were to take all that snow and pile it up on those 12 soccer fields, it would reach a height of over 500 feet, or, or the equivalent of a 50-story building. And our crews moved them away pretty quickly, didn't they? I'm very pleased. <laughs> That's why I can say I believe for Oval Park, for the money, is outstanding. But today, we are at a crossroads, economically, politically, 
and competitively. Now, over 2,800 jobs were added in 2010 to the city of Oakland Park. In the last two years, this city has added nearly 6,000 new jobs during a time when many economists have called it the Great Recession. I think that's just an amazing achievement for what businesses have done in Oakland Park. Yet, this city is not done. Last week, MIQ announced plans to move to the Sprint campus and eventually double its workforce to over 500 employees within 18 months. Fitting in today's high-tech team, MIQ offers global end-to-end -end supplier chain solutions. I'm proud to report to you, in addition to this job announcement, our pipeline is full. Look in the real near future for some more announcements of people moving to Oakland Park. Tell you what, right now, text this to your friends. Get on your Facebook, get on your Twitter, and send it to your friends about companies in Oakland Park are going to be hiring this year. That sounds pretty nice to say. Companies in Oakland Park are hiring. Bet you didn't think you'd hear that when you came here today, did you? Our hard work, both the city's and yours, the business community, is what's being rewarded. It doesn't end here, though. Cities have no choice but to compete for jobs, residents, and tourists nowadays. Competition is no longer local. It's global. By that, I mean that we're in competition with cities around the world for the creation of a highly educated and talented workforce. Education is part of every community's success. That remains a top priority for our future. Education cultivates growth in business development and research and spurs innovation. If you want an example, look at your cell phone. It's a main computer nowadays. It only improves, it only improves each and every year. This day,
Uh, my name is Mark Frutiger, and I'm with Interest Bank here in Overland Park. I've been the regional manager and getting ready to transition into the commercial lending area. But we're looking to grow and help businesses grow, and I think that that's what's going to be important for Overland Park. So I think that Interest will be a major player and a big reason that businesses in this area grow. I am engaged, so I don't have a family yet, but we'll have a family here in the next year or so. Hopefully we'll have a house by the end of the month in Overland Park. The house that we can grow into, kids are probably five years down the road, but you know, it's the school system is attractive as well. I'd really like to see Vision Metcalf come to fruition, where there is public transportation and a connection with downtown Kansas City. That way, residents in Overland Park have the opportunity to have great shops, a system of travel, a kind of a, a backbone that they can really center around and the city can grow from that, but then give residents and surrounding communities to come and bring their money to Overland Park. But I'd also like to see growth in South Overland Park so that way we're still on the cutting edge and businesses want to come here because we're not just a landlocked city. What I'd like to see for my family is a lot of the things that make Overland Park attractive now to still be in place. I'd like for my family to have a place that they can build memories and then bring you know, their kids 30, 40 years from now and say, well, this is a place I used to go to when I was growing up. I want to make my home here. For our guy at the break, what we all want is for our kids and their kids to say, I want to make my home here. One very good start is Prairie Life, Prairie Fire at Lionsgate at 135th and Mall. But there's even greater news about Prairie Fire. In an announcement late last week, Fred Merrill took the first major step with the new Cenotopia Oval Park 20 Theater, which will open in the spring of 2013. It will feature the latest state-of-the-art technology, including digital super high definition projection and the finest sound system in the industry. <coughs> Excuse me for my excitement, but you know what this means? It is absolutely clear that Prairie Fire is moving forward, that investors are starting to take notice of it and want to be part of this truly regional attraction and destination for Oval Park. And there's more. Prairie Fire will include the upscale housing, an array of retail and the museum at Prairie Fire. It will also have the American Museum of Natural History displays, which include historic features from Rio de Janeiro, Egypt, and elsewhere. Prairie Fire alone expects to attract more than 400,000 people annually. Those visitors and families can also visit Johnson County Community College, which offers a variety of entertainment and cultural programs at the Norman Museum of Contemporary Art and the Carlson Center. Development will continue to be an important part of Oval Park, though the pattern, the pace, and the design of development will be much different in the future. We are starting to see more positive signs in residential and commercial development as it begins to reinvent itself. In residential, we will continue to see new development in the southern portions of, our, of Oval Park. The development of large lots will give way to smaller and more traditional single-family homes. Also, we're going to see higher density mixed-use projects, such as Mission Farms West at 107th and Mission Road, just north of I-435. This $19 million project, which was recently announced, serves as evidence that our local economy is regaining strength. 
We expect to see an increase in residential density along that path as companies who are talking to our city officials about redevelopment there and looking at along that path, including our downtown Golden Park area. We must preserve and renew our older residential neighborhoods. One person who is helping do that is Dr. Joanne Boyd. Joanne has a doctorate degree in education. This wild man, former high school student counselor and educator, is extremely adept at making her community a viable community. Through perseverance and leadership, she has brought neighbors together. She has built bonds that have come to represent strength, protect the children, and give rise to hope and determination in these neighborhoods. She is responsible for putting footballs, soccer balls, and basketballs in the hands of kids who could only pretend they had such toys. What Joanne represents today is a person who cares about her city, her neighbors, the kids, and the future. This is what we all should want. Please help me thanking Joanne, who's with us today. Please stand, Joanne, for everything that she's done. He 
Other works director Doug Bible and others have been instrumental in the US 69 improvements and the flyovers, including the I-435 Antioch interchange. Please help me welcome Bill and wish him good luck. Thank 
day. That was a wonderful gift, and uh, I am now. I can now say that along with my daughters, I am an American girl. <laughs>